I'm excited about a lot of stuff, but lately uh, I'm excited that there's been a sea change in uh, hormone therapy and how it's being viewed and the narrative seems to be quickly turning to, oh man, we should really give women over 50 hormones because the plethora of benefits far outweighs any risk. And not only that, we should no longer be scared to give women over 65 hormones uh, for the benefits to the brain, cardiovascular system, muscle mass, sexual function, bone density, among other things. So we're kind of the sea change of uh, how we look at hormones. And we're even trying to uh, extend the uh, ovarian function, you know, past menopause potentially for all the health benefits. So there's a lot of uh, interesting things happening with women's health, uh, especially post sort of 50 year old women's health in relation to hormones in just the last year, you know, and that's really exciting. Another thing I think for me is just the evolving uh, enthusiasm and research in the longevity space. You know, hopefully in the next year or so, we'll learn more about things that uh, naturally uh, upregulate autophagy in the body, whether by fasting, maybe even through drug pathways like rapamycin. So all these sort of caloric restriction, fasting, mimetic type of uh, technologies, and then showing how that's borne out clinically. You know, I hope that if we have patients who are really engaged in this stuff, we can show them that different tissues in their body are actually getting healthier. We're actually doing that now with carotid ultrasounds. We're seeing the blood vessels get healthier in patients who do Prolon, which is the five-day fasting mimicking diet. So continued enthusiasm around what's happening in the longevity space, uh, but also uh, this sort of narrative shift that's happening in women around uh, women's hormonal health.